What's up, YouTube? How y'all doing out there? So, I'm going to give my first five mods that I would do um, after you buy your Duramax. And some of them aren't going to be mods. First five things. That's more or less what I will call it. First five things that I would do after purchasing my Duramax. Um, and some of these things, most of these things are things that I did do. Not immediately, but as quickly as I could. Um, some of them I should have done quicker. Um, but I trusted the dealership, which was a big no-no. So, the first thing I would do, as soon as I brought it home, um, within a day or two, a couple days, week at most, is I would do a full fluid change. Transmission fluid, um, uh, rear diff, front diff, transfer case, oil change, um, and uh, uh, radiator uh, fluid, check all of the other fluids, power steering fluid, all of that stuff is what that would be the very first thing I would do um, and uh, replace filters fuel filter air filter um, oil filter obviously so your basic maintenance stuff do the all of that right up at the very beginning start from scratch don't care what the little tag in the window says or what the dealership told you um, because uh, they're most of those places are a bunch of crooks so at least in my experience so that's what I would do is I would that would be the very first thing that I would do the second thing after doing all of that is search for a lift pump now when you buy a lift pump you gotta buy it with knowing what your intent for your truck is if you're planning on just keeping it maintained um, and small modifications, bolt-on stuff, then going with a, you know either a 95 or 100 gallon per hour pump is going to be perfectly acceptable. If you're wanting to step it up and get some horsepower and torque out of it, um, and it's no longer about just uh, making it reliable then you're going to want to go with the 150, 165 um, range in, in uh, lift pumps. But that would be the very, that would be the second thing I would do. And you can go with fast. Honestly, the, the differences are minimal from my experience. Um, and uh, it's basically where do you want it? Do you want to advertise or have it easier for you to get to to drain the, the uh, water separator? Or do you mind having it tucked up and hidden away? Um, because honestly, as far as the differences go, that seems to be the biggest difference that I found. And you can go through the range of uh, different ones. As far as, you know, um, do you want the titanium, is it, I think it's titanium series fast, or do you want the basic? Anyway, you get the point, get a lift pump that would be the second thing I would do and do it as quickly as possible um, one because the sooner you do it the better longer your injectors and um, uh, CP3 pump are gonna last you the cleaner you can make that fuel the more lubricated you can make that fuel uh, the less air you can put into the system the less water the better the longer the life of of those expensive items injectors and, and CP3 pump so that would be the very the second thing I would do the third thing I would do um, could be tied back to the first thing depending on you know, your pocketbook and that sort of thing um, the second thing I would do is put a uh, cold air intake in it a good one do your research again do your research um, I found, you know, doing all of my looking, I found SMB to be um, the one that was going to meet my needs the most. Um, and then when you do buy a cold air intake um, or a new intake system, make sure you get a pre-filter. Especially if you're in an area where it's going to be dusty or you're going to, like on my SMB cold air intake, 
the you can leave the bottom plate out so it pulls cold air from you know from the bottom but that leaves it open for a lot more junk to come in um, because it's straight up from the road so um, having a pre-filter is gonna allow that your regular filter to last longer um, and just be cleaner overall the pre-filter just filters out the big stuff the big particles of dirt the big uh, leaves and that sort of thing you can go in there with a, a vacuum and clean that stuff out every once in a while so like I said it you know if you're able to replace it when you do your air filters and all of that then that's what I would do but that would be the second thing or the third thing I would do um, after I got my truck the fourth thing um, would probably be an exhaust especially if you have the uh, LLY LBZ um, and even if you have the LML uh, you're a little more a little more difficult you'll have to get um, delete your truck and get a tuner um, but the exhaust um, on mine and I believe on the LLYs as well the stock exhaust has a um, catalytic converter um, it's a three and a half inch pipe it's uh, got a big huge muffler on it and just taking all of that crap out you're gonna lose a couple of hundred pounds in weight and you're gonna open up and allow your truck to breathe so you're pulling more air in you're pushing more exhaust out and you're able to efficiently get fuel to your engine those three key factors are going to boost your throttle response immensely. I don't know about how much horsepower or torque. I'm sure it adds some, but I've noticed it in the pedal. With those three modifications to my truck, um, lift pump, uh, cold air intake, and uh, exhaust have tremendously raised the amount of uh, throttle response I get out of my truck. And, I mean, it's darn near... Uh, gasoline V8 um, response it is really right there so after you've done those things and you've covered those bases the next step is to decide if you don't have an LML if you have the LLY and the LBZ whether you're going to delete your truck now if you purchased a 165 or a 150 um, lift pump um, then obviously you've pretty much made that uh, made that decision because you're going to want tuning and may as well get rid of all of the emissions crap while you're at it. I chose to stick with the AirDog 100. Um, obviously a previous video if you want to watch that describing why. But uh, I wasn't after huge horsepower and torque. I, for my needs this truck has plenty stock. Um, I just wanted to build reliability. Now you'll hear lots of arguments on whether deleting your EGR and all of that stuff um, will help. I really think it depends on a couple of things. One, how often you're changing your oil. Uh, two, how well is your uh, the, the diesel fuel that you're putting in and how well is it uh, uh, filtered. And three, um, the quality of oil you're putting in so one and two should be the quality of oil and the amount of oil changes three should be your um, uh, your fuel because what happens in these trucks is that it re cycles that fuel uh, the burnt fuel back through the system that's what the EGR does um, and if you've got sticky nasty gross fuel it's going to build up on your turbo and you're going to start seeing your veins stick. Now if you're running good solid fuel with a good additive, um, then you're going to see your veins, uh, you're going to see a, lo a longer life out of your turbo. I had to replace the turbo in, in my truck. Um, so deleting the EGR will effectively get rid of that problem. Um, if you want to be able to run whatever fuel you want and not have to worry about whether it's going to cause issues with your your turbo or not um, 
and you want to be able to go longer between oil changes then by all means delete that sucker um, because uh, what happens is like I said is those veins uh, because of the the uh, just the gunk and either your oil or your your fuel just starts to cake on due to your PCV and uh, your EGR onto those veins and uh, pretty soon they'll start sticking and you'll start getting P0087 or not P0087 P0093 I can't remember now it's been so long since I've had a, 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 a vein coat so you'll start getting vein coats because they'll stick they'll stick either at full throttle or they'll stick at low throttle and uh, they'll stick you know fully open or fully closed um, so you need to decide the fourth thing is you need to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to run your truck um, and then base your build and your changes to your engine on that for me I'm probably going to stick with the uh, leave the EGR partially because when I was looking for a truck and probably when many of you were looking for a truck what were you looking for a truck that had not been tuned it was it was stock um, because you knew that it would be reliable you knew the transmission wasn't beat to hell you knew the engine wasn't beat to hell um, because there was some crazy tune on there so for me that's kind of the the thinking process that I have is that if I leave the EGR on um, because I've not done any tuning to the truck I've um, not done anything to the truck um, by leaving that EGR on it leaves me pretty much stock because all I've done is bolt on items the the exhaust and the cold air intake none of that has to do with beating the crap out of your transmission or the engine um, or any of that so um, those are things that I would think about um, you know you'll get people on here that will swear up and down that you'll never get mileage miles out of your truck if you leave your EGR intact um, I don't disagree that it's not the best for your truck, but I've also seen guys pulling 500,000 miles with their EGR intact. So um, I think it all depends on how you use your truck um, and, uh, you know, are you taking care of your maintenance? Now, if you've got a newer truck um, where you're running a DEF and a DPF, honestly, there shouldn't be any question in your mind. Get that taken care of. Because um, eventually those systems are going to go down and guess what you're going to be stuck with end up doing it at that point um, or uh, Having to replace in a very expensive eg uh, um, A very expensive uh, DPF or DEF uh, DEF is usually fairly expensive so I would say if you're running you know 2007 and a half or newer um, delete it just get it done um, if you're running and you're just running an EGR there's some good arguments to leaving that alone so anyway guys that's my five things do your your regular maintenance as soon as you get at home don't let the the uh, dealership fool you into thinking they took care of all that do it so you know when it was all done and that you know everything is done right um, and then the second thing is get a lift pump decide how you're going to use your truck get a lift pump third thing is get an air cold air intake of some sort a better intake something that's going to flow air better and the fourth thing is getting a exhaust system on there now you could put a, a muffler on there it's not going to lower your um, airflow that much but I would say get at least a four inch exhaust um, unless you really want that deep throaty sound of the five I didn't really care for that I really like the sound of my four inch and I don't have any regrets on it at all so so you know do your changes your oil changes fluid changes maintenance get your lift pump change out your air filter and get a decent flowing exhaust and then number five figure out what your 
going to build your truck for? What's your end game? Building it for power. Um, chances are when you built, got your lift pump, you kind of already had that decision. Um, so that way you know whether you need to delete your truck or not. Um, but other than that, guys, those are the five things that I would do um, as soon as I got my truck home. And uh, most of those I did do um, pretty in rapid succession and uh, um, it has made a huge difference in just the throttle response alone like I said there's probably a horsepower and torque change but I I couldn't tell you one way or another I didn't have the truck long enough to test that theory out um, before I did those things I can tell you throttle response is a big difference so and my fuel economy that's the other thing my fuel economy is a lot better before I got those things, I was running nine miles to the gallon uh, in town driving. Now I'm running 12 to 14, uh, depending on how, <laughs> how well I keep my foot out of it. So I have seen a drastic improvement in my fuel economy by doing those things. Um, so that, that helps as well. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching another video. Please like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. You know, leave me some hate, whatever you want, down in the comment section. And you all have a great afternoon, evening.